If you own a DJI Mini 2, you're probably wondering if it's worth the upgrade to the Mini 3 Pro. And we're here today to answer that question. We're gonna take a look at the design of the aircraft. We're gonna take a look at the inside, see all the different features, compare the batteries, look at the new controllers, and then see exactly, well, if it makes sense to spend a little bit more money and get it. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing before we get into all the details of what's inside the drone and all the functionalities, I wanted to take a look at the outside and see the difference in design. And you may notice right here that the DJI Mini 3 Pro, the new one, is a tad bit bigger. The legs are longer. The body in itself is just a bit more clunky, although uh, it is kind of the same uh, footprint, but the legs are longer, the propellers are longer, the motors are bigger, the sensor is also bigger, the camera can actually go up all the way to 60 degrees as opposed to only 20 degrees on this one and this has the ability to do vertical shots so these are the main things when you first look at the drone that you'll notice the weight is the same these two drones are both weighting in at 248 and 249 grams so right around the same and in terms of the flight time what we're going to see is the new drone is going to be flying at about 34 minutes the old drone the mini 2 is going to be about 31 minutes so you'd be gaining about three minutes uh, in terms of flight time which is not that big of a deal quite frankly um, this has the ability to be upgraded to a bigger battery which will take it over 250 grams but uh, it's going to be uh, designed for 47 minutes so a little bit longer in terms of the flight time here as far as connection between the two drones and the controller we have OQSync 2.0 on this drone we have OQSync 3.0 on this one and then the max speeds are exactly the same at 36 miles per hour so not much difference uh, at this stage the big difference comes from these two buggy eyes right here in the front which are going to be our obstacle avoidance sensors we also have them right here in the back which will allow the drone to well not crash into things this is something that we don't have on the mini 2 originally so if you're someone who's not well super comfortable about flying this might be worth the upgrade right here alone just so you have that little sense of security where you know you're not going to crash into a wall or another object even better this has a pass which is the uh, obstacle avoidance system that is going to go on top below or to the side of an object and allow you to well continue flying forward it's actually quite amazing you'll have to the ability to just push on the forward stick right here and then the drone is going to avoid whatever obstacle is in front of you so that's actually pretty cool now in terms of the battery we tested the batteries we flew this thing quite a bit and we started at 95% uh, on this one this is the best we could get in terms of charging we charged this battery all the way to 98% uh, we were able to get 23 minutes and 46 seconds on the mini 2 and we were able to get about three more minutes 2650 on this drone right here so that's actually quite in line with the, uh, the, da the data from the manufacturer themselves now in terms of the sensor inside of the camera what we have is on this drone is 1 over 2.3 CMOS sensor that's about 12 megapixel we have an upgrade here with a mini 3 which is going to be a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor so about three quarters of an inch sensor at 12 megapixel with the ability to do 48 megapixel using the quad buyer technology in terms of photos and the format you have JPEG and RAW on both of these drones the ability to do this and you have a fixed aperture of f 2.8 versus f 1.7 so this lens right here on the new drone is a little bit brighter in terms of videos you can do 4k on both drones except the mini 3 Pro gives you the ability to do 4k at 60 frames per second up to 150 megabit per second we only had 4k 30 i say only because it's still amazing to find this on the small drone 4k 30 at 100 megabit per second you can also do 2.7k at 60 frames per second versus the same at 30 frames per second on this side and then 1080 at 120 frames per second versus only 60 frames per second on this side here as far as the color mode we've added decent like onto the the mini 3 pro something that we didn't have in the mini 2 you only have normal colors in the mini 2 in terms of the different modes that you can record in you can do burst in the new drone you couldn't in the old one in terms of intervals you could do it on both of them so that's not a big comparison point right here and in auto bracketing you could only do three images at uh, two-thirds of a uh, exposure value you can now do three five and seven images at two-thirds of an exposure value which i think is actually a big deal if you're someone who shoots photos at aeb you really appreciate having the ability to do five images 
or even seven images instead of only three. Now, smart photos, we didn't have that in the Mini 2. We have the ability to do 48 megapixels in the new drone. And then we can also do, like I mentioned in the introduction, the vertical mode. So the vertical mode here will allow you to uh, get a much larger field of view and get a lot more information in your image from this perspective. If you're someone who does a lot of social media posts, you really, really like having this on board. You can do panorama in both of these you can also do a zooming in video mode at 2x 3x or 4x depending if you're shooting at 4k 2.7 or full hd and then you have quick shots the only difference is that this drone actually has asteroid it also has the other five that we had in the mini 2 originally so uh, if this is something that really makes a difference for you you have one more uh, quick shot in here and then in terms of flight mode both of these will fly in cine normal and sports mode as you can get from this controller right Right here. And then you also have the introduction of the intelligent flight modes, I think mostly because now we have obstacle avoidance sensors. So you can do active track, you can do point of interest, you can do spotlight by selecting someone on the screen and then having or someone or something and then having the ability to follow them around using all these automated modes. And then lastly, you can do hyperlapse, something that in the past, along with the intelligent flight modes, was only reserved to much larger drone like the Air Series or the Pro Series. Now, you may be wondering, what about the pricing? Well, the pricing is a little bit steep on this. I think this is a departure from uh, DJI having any entry-level drones at this stage that uh, we can actually recommend to people. I'm a little bit sad about this. Uh, in the past, you could find uh, a, a $300 or $400 drone. Not so much anymore. The cheapest that you can get this drone right here is $669, and that's without a controller. Now, if you were upgrading from the Mini 2 right here and you had this uh, RCN1 controller, well, you can reuse this for the new drone, it will work. So DJI gives you the ability to buy this drone without a controller for 669. If you wanna add an RCN1, it's gonna be about $90 extra at 759. And then if you wanna buy the new DJI RC controller, which is this thing right here, then it's gonna cost you $909. Now you may say that's a lot of money, and yes, it is a lot of money. This is no longer an intro drone that somebody can buy if they want to figure out if this is for them. I think this is next level. This is almost like DJI went from the mini series to the Air series and then kind of did a hybrid of the two and created a new uh, a new type of drone in between the two. So um, I'm like I said, I'm a little bit sad about this. I think a lot of people are gonna to wanna to go back to uh, maybe the Mini 2 or the Mini SE as a startup drone. This is not something that I'm gonna recommend as a startup drone just because it is a lot more expensive. Now, when you add the Fly More combo, you can get all the way to around $1,159, so almost 1,200 bucks. If you get this plus the smart controller, plus two extra batteries that are a little bit larger that are gonna give you a little bit more flight time. So something to ponder, um, you, you have to think about whether or not this you wanna take your Mini 2 to the next level and then get an upgrade or whether you wanna kind of stay in the more affordable range, in which case I think the Mini 2 does a great job. Uh, we also tested the thrust on this drone, which is interesting. You may wonder why we do this. Well, we uh, enjoy having some data. We enjoy seeing if these drones are getting a bit more efficient and sure enough, they are. The Mini 2 could pull 260 grams of thrust, almost its own weight if you think about it. This can pull 420 grams of thrust. Uh, this is the equivalent of a cue ball uh, difference. So it's uh, it's actually quite powerful. I think the bigger propeller, the bigger motors on here really makes it uh, uh, be able to be more efficient and, and just pull a lot more weight. Now, don't get me wrong, none of this, uh, these two drones are not designed to pull anything. They're not carrying drones by any mean, but it just means that I think it's a little bit more efficient. Uh, on the noise side, we noticed that both of them registered at 70 decibels, which sounds actually interesting because we think the Mini 3 is a lot quieter, not a lot, it is quieter than the Mini 2, primarily because of the bigger propellers and the redesigned propellers that have that little uh, rubber tip right here. I think it's really contributing to uh, creating a lot less noise. 
Now let's talk about picture comparison. And I think this is where the biggest difference is going to be. That extra $200, $250, I think really comes into play when it comes to image quality. So if uh, if this is something that's really important to you, you might want to consider the Mini 3. And you can see for yourself, uh, we picked some samples. We have this uh, amazing chart that we use in the studio to do uh, some recording of, of image quality. And you can see right here, this is at ISO 1600, the difference between between the two drones, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the Mini 2 does a great job at uh, at higher ISO. 1600 is gonna be considered higher ISO. Uh, we see that the Mini 3 actually has a dual native ISO, which means that at 100 and at 1600, we have less noise than we have in any other modes. So it works really well that way. Uh, you can see here another sample at ISO 800. Uh, the, the difference between the two is also pretty obvious. And here, this is what we like, what I like to call the torture test. Uh, we have this little area in our chart, and this is zoomed in quite a bit, by the way. Uh, but you can see the details on the Mini 3 Pro versus the Mini 2 is just really showing just a, a blurb of line. It's, it's it's all blurry. And this is not the only drone, by the way. The Mini 2 is not the only drone that has issues with that part of the chart. But I love this section because it's really telling of the uh, of the image quality. Then we have this section here at 3200. ISO 3200 is pretty high up. And uh, what you see is the details in the grass, for example, or on that little uh, sending paper right here, also quite a big difference. And then here in the yellows and the scion and the magenta, same thing, we have a big difference. This is ISO 1600. And in this section, this is pretty obvious as well. I, I call this the barcode. You can really see a difference between the two. Even though the image is a little bit brighter on the Mini 2, this is more of a settings thing than anything else, but you can see the noise difference and, and the detail difference. Now we also tested this with a video and what you can see in the video here, we, we put this on our uh, drone carrier called Octozilla and we were able to fly both drones at the exact same time from the same platform and capture some comparative footage. Uh, what we noticed from this is that the, uh, the, the darks and the highlights on the Mini 3 were a lot better. Uh, it's also a lot, what I like to call crispier. It's uh, the, the, the image is a lot sharper on the Mini 3. The Mini 2 has some sharpness to it, but it feels less natural. It feels like it was done in post-processing. Uh, you can see also the different colors. The Mini 2 is a little bit more blue than the Mini 3. These two were set up the exact same way in auto mode. We like to test these drones, these smaller drones in automatic mode, just so you have a good idea of how uh, the camera actually reproduces the image. So I would say in terms of photos and videos, it's a clear win for the Mini 3. As a matter of fact, we put this against way more expensive drones, and even then, the Mini 3 was winning. So make sure you head over to our, uh, our playlist for the Mini 3 so you can see other comparisons with other drones. But to us, it's pretty obvious that this is a great drone. So to recap, pricing, yes, this is a big departure. DJI is starting to try to compete with Hotel, I think in terms of the pricing. Hotel raised their prices on the Nano series quite a bit compared to what the Mini 2 was. And I think DJI is capitalizing on this and lining themselves up. Uh, I kind of hate to see that in a way because I, I, I would like to see an entry level drone that people can get into that's more affordable, but it is what it is. It is providing a lot more features as you could see. Uh, this is a different category, I think. It's called a mini, but I think we're gonna have to start looking at it from a departure from the, the very basic mini that we've seen in the past. Obviously you have more features, you have obstacle avoidance, you have a better camera, you have the vertical mode, uh, you have a slightly bigger battery if you want to, so that alone puts it, like I said, in kind of a in-between category between the Mini and the Air series. So that's it. That's all I have for you. As always, like, subscribe, leave your comments. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. We've been flying this thing for a couple of weeks and, uh, and actually it is a really good drone. So see you next video.